that would mean everything is in done. So we have, we have moved everything into done. That means we are finished. And we should, we should be finished before the sprint review. Now the sprint review comes, and then product owner and other stakeholders who come, the team has set up everything, it's deployed on AWS, uh, it's, it's there, we tested it in our one task. So now the product owner, maybe we sent the product owner the results, the, the reports of these uh, cucumber acceptance tests before that the product owner knows, okay, ah, this was covered. Maybe he understands the, 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 the cucumber tests, can check with me. And then the, the, the product owner would, maybe would use it, uh, would try to do it. Other stakeholders would come, okay, I would like to do this, check and see. It's not a demo. Huh? Sprint review meeting is not that the team sits there and says, okay, and here you here can do this, and here you can do that. It's not a demo. It's the, the team has delivered a product increment, and now it's kind of acceptance testing review of the product owner and the stakeholder. It doesn't have to be long, it's maybe just two, two three hours. Um, but it's, it's important that they check it. Is this the story, is this delivered the way we want it or not? Does it work? Um, they can review the acceptance tests, make sure that this was okay. So this is then the review at the, the sprint review at the end. That's important because if the product owner accepts, so if the product owner accepts it, then that would mean these stories are okay. They are accepted. And that also means the, the story points here that we, let's do this in eight, it's the bigger one, that's a five. So these eight story points, and these five story points now have been finished. So in this sprint, we finished 13 story points. So that's our velocity of that sprint then, how many story points we did, our throughput in a way. If the product owner comes and says, okay, yeah, but sorry, um, in the story it said here that there is an acceptance test and if I do that it doesn't work. Then what it means is this whole story goes into the next sprint. And maybe there's just two tasks that has to be done, but it doesn't count for that sprint, so we only get five points for our velocity in that sprint. Of course then next sprint we get much more because then the story will be finished with others. Then, the, then it would be done manually, and then maybe there's a problem that this is not really working manually, and it would take too much time. So then, maybe after the first sprint, product owner sits there four hours going through test cases, or maybe other stakeholders, and, and then people complain, this, is, this doesn't work. Okay, then in a retrospective meeting, after that, product owner would raise that. I'm sorry, but uh, in the review, it takes like four or five hours to go through it manually. Some stakeholders complained, um, this is not good. Can we improve that? And then the team would have to see, okay, yeah, can we automate something? Maybe we have to do automated UI testing in, in addition to the cucumber testing. And then this would be maybe then a technical story huh? that moves in high priority for the next sprint to implement the, the automated. So the story would maybe be then, um, as a product owner, I want to um, uh, uh, have automated uh, acceptance testing so that I don't have to spend so much time testing in the review. Mm -hmm. So this, this, and then and then after that we have automated tests that make it quicker. So this is the this, this is the thing of inspection, adjusting, adapting, <coughs> improving. It's a good, good question because that if it doesn't work, we have to improve it somehow. And the team is the one who finds how to improve it. I mean, because there's nobody else who, who tells how to do Something is, um, if something is blocked, yeah. then you would also this would also be raised in the in the 
the daily scrum, you would say, okay, um, let's see, the data, maybe something was a problem with the DB table here. Uh, there's a problem with the database. AWS database, there, there was some, I couldn't log in, or there's something wrong with the, with the uh, security settings. So then this would be one of these obstacles. But then this, the team would quickly figure out, um, okay, how can we resolve that? And the Scrum Master maybe has to, has to take the task to, to go to IT operations or whoever, or the team itself has to create a new task that this has to be resolved first. And then maybe we move that, we move that back into to-do and create another task um, where we first have to say here, um, the new task comes in where we say, okay, configure RDS on Amazon first, correctly. There might be cases where, um, out, where there is a block that cannot be resolved in the spring, and then the product owner can could kind of say, okay, I, I see that this cannot be done. You explain it to me. So we have to move that story out back into the background. So it, it won't, it won't it, in a way it's similar to like not done, but you know that it's not the team's fault. In a way, the team couldn't resolve it, so it, it just it just goes into the next. And, and if this cannot be resolved until the next sprint, we have to move it down a little. And there are very rare cases where things happen that the sprint has to get cancelled, very rarely. So this could be that maybe people work on it. We have like three week sprints or four week sprints, and um, the problem is that uh, the competitor just released some features and we have to get them out. And we don't have time to do that sprint and do it in the next. And then the product owner would say, I'm very sorry, let's freeze that here. Um, maybe they, you work anyway in a branch with your code, so let's create a new branch. We, we stop the sprint now, we do a quick planning meeting, and, and you do something else. It happens not normally. That would be very rare. So this is kind of one sprint. <coughs> And definition of done, eh? very important uh, thing. So you need to have in the beginning, maybe also the sprint zero, think about what does it mean for us that something is done, the story is done. So this should be kind of a checklist of criteria that involve, involves a lot of things. Eh? It can be things that uh, it, has to, it has to be tested, unit tests are there, test coverage is so much, um, there are cucumber tests, there are automated boot. UI testing is there, um, but also many things where it clearly it clearly states um, the user story is deployed on the AWS uh, staging environment um, and ready to be executed by the by the product owner and and all other things that, that need to be kind of checked before we say we are really done. So so it really reflects the, the shippable state because we don't do a prototype. Eh? Ideally, we would never touch that code again after, this, after the stories are implemented. This is done. So it has to be done. And to better, to better manage that, we all have to agree what does it mean we are done. So that's why this is our shared understanding of completeness. So we really know, okay, if this is all okay, it's done. There should be nothing left that, is, that still has to be done. Also, this, can, this, this kind of definition of done is also something that the product owner has to check and see in the, in the review. Is it really true that it's done? Um, I don't know, have you heard about the term technical debt? Some people not, some not. <laughs> so this is actually this is quite important because that's something that in, also sometimes in projects is quite hidden. There's the projects accumulate a lot what is called technical debt. And this can kill a project at the end. So technically that means it's work that is not really done. Hidden, undone work. So something where we say, yes, yes, story A is finished. But actually we know that there's still some fixes we have to do to really finish it. But we just don't do it now. So that means some tasks that should have been here on the board and should have been done are not done. But they have to be done at a certain point in time. Right? So if, if this happens every sprint, every sprint we leave some tasks out, they add up and add up. So at the end, we, we, 
come close to our release and then we realize, oh, there's all the, these hidden tasks. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, we are done now. It's, there's no sprint to do all these hidden things. So this is kind of the, de the technical debt. So you, you, you kind of, it's like a credit card where you, where you use it more than you have. Huh? You get more into minus, 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 but you have to pay it off one day. Hmm? I have a question. Hmm? Let's say during the test you find some uh, issues. Mm -hmm. Do you raise a bug ticket, a defect ticket, and fix it immediately on the screen? Or uh, we can uh, put it in a product backlog and, you know? No, no, because if, it's, if, there, if, if what we did here, like if you... If because if uh, the defect can have a different type of severity. Yeah, I mean, if, let's say if this was implemented here, mm -hmm. this was a task, and now you, you we test that at the end, mm -hmm. which actually maybe shouldn't be at the end. Huh? Mm -hmm. Because if you find something, mm -hmm. if there is still a bug, the story is not done. Huh? But if they fix it, you have to fix it in that sprint. So if you see something happened, something was not implemented correctly, you can either take that back, and, and make a new effort on it. Or you can specifically say, okay, um, something here has to be implemented, uh, implement component A, X, Y, Z. <coughs> or fix, or you can, hear, you can also say, uh, fix bug for component A, and we write it on here. That there doesn't have to be any extra bug ticket or anything, because it's all, we are our team, so if you, if you find a problem in testing, you have to do it the sprint, so that means everything we do is a task. So we put it on there and somebody has to do it. That's why um, we have to make sure that uh, uh, we can automate testing as much as possible and maybe not have one task test. Maybe we even can, can improve our, our testing in a way that we can test in different, different steps, not all at the end. Or we do it in a way that we leave still one day for fixes before the review. So we did that in, one, in this four-week project. We actually we did testing two days or three days before the review, the final tests. So we had two more days to fix bugs. But it all, it all has to happen in that sprint. Otherwise, we are not done, and then it doesn't count for the sprint. So you so that's why it's it's. Uh, uh, you have to find a many different way to organize. Maybe in the first sprint, if this happens, and we don't have the time to fix it, so we see it doesn't count because there's still a bug in it. In the retrospective meeting, we talk about it, and we have to find a way how can we organize ourselves as a team better that we can actually still fix bugs in the testing. Hmm? So, as a follow-up question on, on the fact, uh, mm -hmm. in three defects. So is there, does it mean that we don't, uh, that's not much? If there's no need for a ticket, uh, then the team has to go there. So, so maybe it's, if, it's, if it's a bigger system which, with, with, where different teams work on it, and there is like final integration tests at, at certain stages or releases, then it makes sense because then it's, it's not part of a sprint, then it's maybe a level above it. But if we work in, as a team in a sprint, there's no need for a special bug tracking tool. If you don't work on a wall, if you're using an agile tool, then I would just also do bug tracking in there. I mean, everything is a task, so, so then you just do it in a sprint. You just create another task and you call it fix bug and describe the bug. Very helpful. So that's a, that's a good thing. I mean, it's like easier also. <laughs>
if we want that, we have to think about how can we bring that in. So if this is really a, if this is really a requirement, so how can we how can we still have independent testing here? I mean that that would not be really Scrum anymore because then uh, Scrum doesn't have people outside of the team doing that. But if you really want to have that, you could have maybe a separate tester or test team that also maybe in the last two days of the sprint is then doing additional independent testing for that. Of course, it's not really Scrum, uh, but you can, you can make it work. If this is a requirement because of some uh, standard or way to work, that you are forced to do that, um, you kind of have to bend the rules here. That you're <laughs> So, we're talking about like, like independent testing or whatever. Touching on the topic, right? how do we like, in an agile environment uh, prevent like uh, test bias? For example, right now when we test against uh, the, uh, the user story, mm -hmm. um, like we're testing things that work. What about things that we, I mean like, uh, um, what about testing other things or making sure we have enough coverage, things that we didn't think about, you know? So, yeah, because if we expect like uh, uh, like like um, like that like that acceptance criteria, mm -hmm. so we're testing things that only that, that we are we are compiling tests or, or sorry uh, uh, composing a test that measures what we know already will work. Mm -hmm. What about the other things? Or the um, you should bring them in. I mean that's why that's why I I, um, I think it's important that in an agile team there are people in there that have that training to be really a tester that know about these things because a the normal developer would not think about that. Eh? They would do this kind of the, the standard testing that is obvious to do. Uh -huh. But that's a good point. So in the same way, like uh, if you would be now in the team, eh, you would raise that question as you did now. And then people would, would, would say, oh, I, I actually have never heard about that. What is that? And why is this important? You, you explain that to the team. The product owner says, I think that's good. Um, we should not just test what we what we what we know. So then, you come in in the in the in the planning meetings no, when or when we write the user stories and we define the test criteria or in the sprint planning, so that we also that, that to make sure that these cucumber tests or whatever tests we do that they also cover cover other things. Maybe we need to update our definition of done to include the coverages in there that we have the right measure of coverages. And, and have, can we automatically assess them? So this it's, it's very good no? because that's exactly how you would be in that team. Because maybe the team ha has not thought about it, and then you as a tester can actually bring that in, and then the team can see how do we do that now. No? Okay. So talking about coverage, right? Then uh, so there's no need for any like uh, like uh, uh, like test coverage or. or 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 requirement traceability anymore in this kind of setup? Um, no, because the, the I mean our requirement is right there. Okay. Um, and um, I mean you can still do, no? you can still um, I mean we have our tests, our automated tests or so, so you can still kind of in in the tool still make sure that you later on know if I run these five tests that that you know which user stories they cover. This I would still do. So there is still traceability and also for a user story, um, sometimes it's good to know actually which stakeholders were involved yeah. from the requirements. So again, again, this is something maybe for a small project not needed, yeah. everyone knows it, but if it starts getting bigger, and then maybe we don't even think about it in the beginning, we realize after two, three sprints that, um, oh man, actually uh, something didn't work, we have to go back and we have to prove again that the story is tested, but we, I don't, we don't remember exactly which tests cover which stories. So then in the retrospective again it shows up, you can discuss that, you can say, okay, we have that problem, how can we make that better? You would suggest that we actually should trace the tests with the stories, how can we do that? How can we implement that? And then we take that up and do it. And then the next iteration we see, did it work? In the next retrospective, we check and see that it worked. Yes, so we improve the process. So this is how uh, this is how it works. So you really uh, have to ask the questions. Uh, did we think about that? Did we do that? Could we do that better? Because I learned before in other projects we did this. Why don't we do it here too? Uh, in real life, uh, we need to get someone 
uh, to really record down all this progression and all the discussion since in Scrum or Sprint, yes, so so many ongoing discussions going on. If we didn't need uh, didn't get someone to record down, so sometimes certain people yeah. might overlook or forget to yeah, you know. uh, discuss. Yeah, sometimes maybe uh, a little a little paper like this with a task on it is not and enough. And after so. that, just tear off, then people might forget what they need to do. Yeah, I mean, you have it here, so you still need you still see what what needs to be done, what's done. I mean, this is visible, but sometimes maybe we forget about really what what what, what is involved in this task exactly. Uh, record down. Do so um, then, if if you need to to make more notes on it, uh, you do that. <coughs> So is we will see that also later. Let, uh, I talk about a little bit about there are other things you do when you when you write stories to add more information. Mm -hmm. Again, uh, if you if we see the project after one two sprints, uh, uh, ah shit, we forgot that. Uh, we should have written, wrote that down. Then we write it down. Uh. Mm -hmm. So everything that helps us to to be better, we do. But we don't have a process that says um, every daily scrum has to be recorded by a minute taker <laughs> in word format or something. Uh. So, but if we see if there's a need for it, we do it. I mean, we actually had, um, for each story, we had like kind of links to, to a repository with all information about it. And if there were certain things, we, you can also add here, you just add other colored notes and, and you, put, you put more information on it to describe something. I mean, the teams are very creative to find ways that to document that. Uh, but that's a good point. I mean, sometimes in projects that there might be audit requirements uh, where, where you're forced to require certain steps, then you do that. Uh. Mm -hmm. Like in medical, I mean, in, in the company in Switzerland, we did a lot of medical projects and they have these things. So you, you're required to record your process in certain ways. Then these become tasks also on the board where it says um, create that document to satisfy process step uh, so and so on. Actually, how we did it was we, we took every daily scrum, we took a picture, mm -hmm. and that satisfied the audit requirement mm -hmm. because you could see every day, you could see what was done, you could see the new estimates. That's that's enough. Mm -hmm. Picture of the board, mm -hmm. audit done. If you don't need more, don't do it. <laughs> so so, um, I mean, sometimes in need negotiation with that process, uh, with that quality manager, because they, they say, ah, just a picture. I mean, I want to see a report, blah blah blah. And then you have to really ask, okay, but what, what has to, what is the purpose of this audit? What do we need to prove? Okay, but if you see, if you look at a picture, I can exactly show you this we did, this we didn't, this took longer. Okay, enough.